Arise, shine, your light has come. Arise, shine, the glory of the Lord has appeared among us. So with you. Join me in the prayer for illumination. God of light, whose wisdom shines like stars in the midnight sky, make these holy words clear to us so that our eyes will see your salvation and our lives will be radiant before you. We pray expectantly. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. 
for darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. and Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of, multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba will come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall pro proclaim the praise of the Lord. Our psalm this morning is from Psalm 72, verses 1 through 7, 10 through 14. Please read with me as you are able. Give justice to your anointed, O God, and your righteousness to those chosen, that your people may be judged with righteousness and your poor with justice. Let the mountains yield peace for the people and the hills justice. May your anointed defend the cause of the poor, give deliverance to the needy, and crush the oppressor. May your anointed endure like the sun, and as long as the moon, throughout all generations. May your anointed be like rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In that day, justice will flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. May all rulers fall down before the anointed, all nations serve and give homage. The anointed has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the poor who have no helper. From oppression and violence, the anointed redeems their life and precious is their blood. Our second reading this morning is from the epistle to the Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery for ages in God who created all things so that through the church, the wisdom of God and its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed the star at its rising, and we have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod 
secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, the wise men set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him off. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another word. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You can see the wise men being warned in a dream by an angel on the bulletin cover of this week's bulletin. We have such an abundance of art for the three kings. Sometimes it's difficult to know exactly which one to choose. Because the Gospel of Matthew is full of dreams, angels appearing to men in dreams, Joseph three times and the kings once, I chose that angel pulling back and touching one of the kings in a dream. Epiphany, which is what we celebrate today, means showing or manifestation or revelation. And like the wise men, God seeks after us as they sought after the star. The difference is that God seeks after us a billion million times more diligently and more fervently than the kings sought after the child. Scholars think the kings spent many years in preparation for their journey, seeing the star in the distance and watching it come closer. If God seeks after us a billion more times than the wise men sought after the star, what does that mean for us? What then are we to do? Our job is simply to be open, to invite being seen by God to once a day or once a week, shoot an arrow prayer to the heavens saying, God, here I am. It is of course, our tendency as human beings to want to hide, not only from God, but from each other. We feel guilt or shame or inadequate or like we don't measure up or sometimes just shy. But God invites us to invite others to see us and to be with us and to enjoy us and to understand each other as gifts more precious than gold, frankincense, or myrrh. Do you remember in the old days before fiber internet, before Wi-Fi, before a smartphone? Do you remember dial-up? Do you remember that handshake between the two computers? One would broadcast on one frequency and the other would search to find the frequency and then they would have a handshake. It's kind of like that. God is always broadcasting his love for us, his care for us, his presence with us. And occasionally we are able to find that spot where God is broadcasting. And we too share in the revelation, the manifestation, the joy that the wise men shared. And it is 
this searching for the spot that is our journey of faith. Perhaps you're familiar with Julian of Norwich, how she suffered in her youth, a series of revelations or showings. She was very ill, but she saw Christ and she spent the rest of her life living as an anchoress. They built a little cubby hole for her on the side of the cathedral in Norwich, England. And she spent her life there recalling these showings, these manifestations, these revelations that she received from Christ. And she wrote, perhaps for the first time in detail about the motherhood of God. We also have, um, we also have um, from her the understanding of Christ, not only as our mother, but as our guide, our light, the one who redeems us. And so the invitation for today is that we show ourselves to one another, that we invite each other to see who we are deeply, to be known by one another, to be seen, because God has given each person in our lives to us as a gift. So show yourself to God and see what happens. Show yourself to one another and be filled with joy. God expressed love for all humankind through Israel, whom God chose to be a covenant people to serve him in love and faithfulness. When Israel was unfaithful, God disciplined the nation with judgment and maintained the covenant through the prophets, priests, teachers, and those who trusted in God. These witnesses called all Israelites to a destiny in which they would serve God faithfully and become a light to the nations. The same witness proclaimed at the coming of a new age, a true servant of God in whom God's purpose would be realized. Our prayers of the people this morning include prayers for Tamara Mancini's friend's father who is suffering from Answer. And for Ron Cheney's sister, who is suffering from COVID, the Cheneys are quarantining because they came in contact with Ron's sister last weekend. And we have in our prayers good health, 
safety and warmth for the chains for Ron's sister and for all of us, including any travelers. Let us pray. In the name of Christ, let us pray for the light of the world, saying, Oh Christ, our light, hear our prayer. We pray for the church. Shape the church through the mystery of your will into one body, one people, sharing in the promise of the gospel. Oh Christ, our light, hear our prayer. We pray for God's world. The world in which we live. We ask God, work out your eternal purpose among us so that all nations may be reconciled and all peoples live in peace. O oh Christ, our light, hear our prayer. We pray for this community of Lubbock, Texas. Defend the cause of the poor, deliver the weak and needy, and establish justice in this place. O oh Christ, our light, hear our prayer. We pray for our loved ones and for all who are on our prayer list in the bulletin, as, as well as for Tamara's uh, friend's dad and uh, Ron Cheney's sister and all travelers. We pray also for all who grieve and mourn the loss of loved ones. Lift up the hearts of all who suffer. Let them rejoice in your presence and give thanks for your grace. O oh Christ, our light, hear our prayer. Christ is the hope of the world. Christ, help us to bear witness to your light so that all may trust and have life in you. And it is in your holy name we pray. The Lord Amen. be with you also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right to give you thanks and praise. Good and gracious God, we look to you and we are radiant. We thrill and rejoice as nations come to your light and leaders welcome your dawning. You call us to arise and shine, for your glory has risen upon us. And blessed is Christ. With the ancient Magi, we come to pay Christ homage. We give Christ the treasures of our hearts and the treasures of our lives. As Christ's star shines down upon us, we are overwhelmed with joy. Remembering your goodness and grace, we offer ourselves to you with gratitude. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. Make us one body. Make us bold and confident in our faith by the power of your spirit. As you show us the mystery of ages, bring all to trust in you. Through you, in the unity of the spirit, we bless you, God of glory now and forever, and let God's children say, Amen. Amen. Now, with the confidence of the children of God, we are bold to pray together the prayer that Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, come. thy will be done, be done on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us Just this day our, our daily, daily bread, bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. debtors. And lead us not, not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power, power and the glory forever. Amen.
his glory outshines the sun. No longer distant, we will be gathered together in God's gracious life. This is the promise given to us.